The basic structure of a Media Composer project is actually very similar to Final Cut Pro. The biggest difference is that Media Composer takes care of some of the housekeeping for you. On first launch, you'll encounter the Select Project dialog. The project management in Avid is designed with two things in mind. One, your project data is extremely valuable, and two, hard drives and RAIDs fill up really fast. Media Composer keeps your files in three very specific places. Private stores your projects in the Documents folder of your current user home directory. If you're curious about the exact path, you can see it at the top of the dialog. Shared stores your projects in the shared user directory of the computer so anyone can access the project regardless of their user login. Finally, you can access projects stored anywhere else on your system via the external option. Take advantage of Avid's housekeeping though and try to keep your projects in either the private or shared locations unless you're working in a larger collaborative environment, in which case you'll obviously be playing by the house rules. If you create a new project, you can quickly choose format settings, including stereoscopic options if you're working with stereoscopic media. If you've never heard the term raster dimensions before, it simply means the pixel width and height of the image. Media Composer also gives you the option of working with either a video or RGB color space. Select Film to choose a size and perf type. When you create your project, you'll see the following. The Composer window, which includes the source and record monitors, the Avid equivalent of the viewer and the canvas the sequence timeline, currently empty of course, and the project window. An initial bin is also created for you. The project window is very much like the project browser in Final Cut. It contains all of the bins you're working with in your project. One big difference here is that you can't create a sequence or add a clip directly to the project window. Media and sequences have to be added to a bin. We'll see why in a moment. So you right click to create bins in the project window and then add your media and sequence to those bins. Like Final Cut, you can combine bins into tabs by dragging the header of one onto another. In Media Composer, the project window also conveniently includes access to the settings associated with your project and system in one location. To quickly jump to a setting like, say, keyboard mapping, click in the list and press the first letter of the item you're searching for, in this case, K. Double click to access those settings. To learn about mapping your favorite Final Cut Pro keyboard commands to the Avid keyboard and taking them with you wherever you go, watch the video on using Final Cut key commands. Like Final Cut's project browser, you have shortcut access to transitions and effects here. Media Composer and Symphony ship with a host of world-class effects for both video and audio. We'll take a closer look in a later video. A nice touch here is the Format tab, which allows you to change the format settings you made when you created the project. Like Final Cut Pro, Media Composer can accept mixed codecs, formats, and frame rates in a single sequence timeline. Rounding out the project window, a couple of info tabs, including a handy hardware tool that gives a quick visual of how much space you have available on your drives. Let's wrap this initial overview with a look at bins. In Final Cut Pro, bin is basically another name for folder. But in Media Composer, bins are much more powerful. While they do organize your content, there's much more to them than that. You see, in Media Composer, you can work with bins independent of the project they were actually created in. Say you're working on a long-form edit for a TV show, but the editor in the next edit bay is working on a promo for the same episode. She could import your bin into her project. To open a bin from another project, just right-click in the project window and choose Open Bin. So now you're both editing from the same content, but your sequences are safely tucked away in your project and her promo edits are kept in her project. You choose what you want to collaborate with and what should stay specific to your project. Where Final Cut Pro allows you to select between a list and icon view, Media Composer actually has three layout options for a bin selectable at lower left. Frame view is just like the Final Cut icon view with the ability to storyboard by dragging clip icons around. Text view is also very similar to Final Cut's list view, although more customizable. 
Right-click the column header to choose exactly what metadata columns you want displayed. Once you've chosen a set of columns that you like, you can create a custom set so that in future you can quickly toggle to that group of column headers whenever you need the information. You can even create your own custom columns like a ratings column for example. Finally, Script View is a hybrid of frame and text view with the additional option to make quick shot annotations. While we're here, you may have noticed another menu button in the lower left of the bin window. This is the Fast menu and gives you quick access to tools and options that you'll commonly want to use while in a bin. You'll find Fast menus throughout the interface. Each Fast menu contains commands specific to the window in which it's located. One thing which sometimes confuses Final Cut editors is the freeform window layout in Media Composer. The Avid interface lets you arrange windows however you like overlapping or in neat rows. To keep your windows organized the way you like them, you can save layouts just as you would in Final Cut Pro using the Windows Workspaces menu. Media Composer will always remember the last state of your windows whenever you open a saved project, but Workspaces allow you to jump to different configurations whenever you need to. Okay, so by now you should have a good sense of where everything lives in Media Composer. You've probably already noticed that there's far more that's familiar to you than not. And in the next video, we'll take a look at editing sequences using the timeline and composer window monitors.